being nailed, you will see this a lot, at least in the beginning, maybe even accompanied with some cursing, but after you learn the tracks, both will be reduced. But let's not go ahead of ourselves and start with the options. As you can see, there are enough video options to make the game run on slower machines. The game came out in 2010 and I can safely say it looked decent 4 years later. I was quite surprised from the audio options. You can manage every sound in the game, engine, music, environment and so on. As a whole, the audio is ok. The engines don't sound that good, but the music is decent, fits really well with the game. Also, you can adjust the brightness and rebind keys on the keyboard. And honestly, you need to, because they are weird. You can play with 360 controller, but the keyboard is absolutely fine. After you set up all the options, it's time to choose male or female character, some clothes for them, and what to drive, ATV or dirt bike. For your driver, customizations are limited just to clothes, but you can change the parts of the vehicle. They are unlocked just by playing the game and they have their advantages and disadvantages. The gameplay is arcade, here the gravity is not the master. What I mean is, you can do extremely ridiculous jumps. The sense of speed is amazing. This maybe is one of the few games where I don't mind the motion blur. Even if I want to, I can't turn it off. In the beginning, before I get used to the sense of speed, I often miss some turns. Interesting thing in the gameplay is the steering in the air and leaning to adjust your jumps. In other words, you almost fly. There are four types of races. Single lap, three laps, time challenge and stunt race. The first three are self-explanatory. The stunt race is a little bit different. They are not stunts in the traditional sense. In this mode, points are given if you drive through fire gates in circles, make a wheelie and few others. And of course here also matters if you finish in first place and how much you are in front of the other players. That way you can win a race even if you didn't do enough of the stunts. All of them give you boost. My favorite way of getting it is to fall down on someone or push them in an obstacle. This can happen to you too. Other interesting thing is the mutators. They are constant boost or no collision. To work everything I said about the gameplay, you need really good tracks. This is the case here. The design is great, even the environments are good. Village, harbor, forest, canyon and others. Every track have different routes to take, but not all of them are shortcuts. Also in the tracks there are some obstacles like falling rocks, but they are easily avoidable and stop being surprised after a while. One of the things I didn't like is the difficulty. I played the game on medium. The first half of the game I didn't have any problems with the AI, then the difficulty jumps higher for a few tracks, after them I was winning every single race without a problem. But the biggest issue here is the repetition. It's getting kind of boring after a while because there isn't enough variety. Since this is an old game, the online multiplayer is completely dead, but if you have some friends, there is a LAN. It's such a rare thing these days. I never play a racing game with such sense of speed and adrenaline, some compare it to Motorstone. Even with the repetition which comes at some point, this is still a solid game. If you have friends to play, it gets even better. I recommend it. 